Hey everybody, anybody. I didn't give you much warning that I was gonna do a live, but it's Tuesday and I wanted to do a live video. It's also voting day. Um, so that made me want to talk about the whole reason we're doing these challenges and the lack or loss of mojo that we all seem to have. So it seemed to get worse after the last major election in 2016. And I've been talking to a lot of people and they seem to feel the same way. That that was sort of, it just seemed to kind of rock it, all of that. So in talking to other people and people that work in service and helping others, one of the things that seems to help people is crafting. That would be our knitting, our spinning, our weaving, and we've all given it up. Well, not all of us, but a lot of people have. And I know I haven't given it up, but I'm producing a lot less than I used to. I do a lot of starting and stopping and starting and stopping and you know, ripping out projects and getting rid of projects and cutting them off the loom and just like, this just isn't working. So I'm just wanted to remind you all that even if you're not producing, it's still okay that our mojo is here and there and it comes and goes, but we should be trying to craft more when we need it more. So I'm hoping that these challenges are working. I've heard from a few people, but not a whole lot. Uh, the videos, the live videos look like they're getting a lot of um, people stopping in, visiting, but I'm hoping that they catch on and it's actually helping some people and uh, we all get back to doing more crafting. So, Today, I wanted to finish up the challenge and the information on the silk hankies. And I finished plying after last week. And this is how I store my hankies for working on jewelry. So what I do is I take the hankies or the plied yarn at this point. It's no longer a silk hanky. I take the, take the plied yarn, make your skein of yarn like you normally would. And then I steam it. I take an iron and steam over it, steam. Or I, you know, run it over a pot of steaming something. I do the iron thing almost always. It just set the skein of yarn down on the ironing board and just steam over it. And make sure everything's getting good and steamed. That's how I set the twist in all of my silk yarns. I don't wash them, I just steam them. It's fast, it's lovely, and they're nice. And then I store them on a piece of cardboard, like this. I just wind them on a piece of cardboard, and they're really, it keeps, particularly for the tuss of silk, or the hankies, because the hankies retain a lot of that stickiness that they have. So when you're storing them like this, it keeps them a little bit easier to deal with and separate. If you're putting them in a center pole ball, or even leaving them in a hank, they tend to get stuck to each other a little bit more and it may take a little bit more effort to get them apart, especially if they've been sitting there a while. So for me, this is an ideal way to store them, especially for little projects. And mostly that's all I'm doing with the silk hankies is little projects. So I wanted to show you the little project that I'm doing with the hankies. And I'm making things like this bracelet. Can you see that? Wow. It's just a woven little bracelet with the beads. This was plain Tussa silk top. This wasn't hankies, but it was from Tussa silk top. And you can kind of see it's got the beads and everything in it. And I'm gonna show you today how I make these little things. And there's a couple of different I have a big loom. I have a Merix tapestry loom. 
and you can see I have one started here. This one is some leftover merino silk that I had. Uh, it was from Into the World. It was really, really pretty. And it was a 50-50 merino silk blend. So it doesn't have to be 100% silk. But this is set up like a typical tapestry would be, but just in a small amount to do the bracelets. And what I've found, though, is that I really like using these little uh, pearl and loop looms. If I can get the the package the little pearl and loop guys so this one is a swatch maker and it's a 10.0 swatch maker and I think they have ones now for bracelets but you don't really need them because this one works just fine and it's good to have these if you're doing weaving and you need some swatches anyway so I'm going to show you how I set this up and you want an even number of threads on here now I start by taping a thread to the back because it makes my life easier and then I know where to start so it's taped to the back and then I want to put it through start it through the little comb bits and then down and I'm going all the way around the back and putting it through the next indent. Can you see where those are? Yes. So on both and I'm going all the way around the back. Now what's that? It feels like maybe that's a bunch of waste and if I was doing a regular swatch this isn't how I'd be doing it. But for a bracelet as you can see I'm just gonna not finished with that yet but you can see on this one I've got these longer ends sticking out of it those longer ends are what this back bunch is so we want to have those if we were just going up and over and back and up and over and back we wouldn't have any extra ends we just have a little bit up here this is our weaving section and depending on how big your wrist is depends on whether you're just gonna do a small bit or all of it but the rest of it is going to be what we need to play with to make our ends on this. If we're choosing those ends. I'm going to show you another one um, in a little bit that didn't use those ends. But it's a nice option to have. And I like having those ends even if I'm going to take them off because it gives me enough to work with. If I have just a little bit and I'm trying to knot it, it makes it difficult. So I would continue on with this. And the current bracelet I'm doing has 10. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And sometimes they don't want to go into those little bits, but they will, they will. And 10. So there's 10 on there because I counted. I cut off a little bit and I use a little bit more tape. So there, that's all set up to go. And then what I need to do is cut off another piece of the thread that I've made. And normally I would do a much longer piece than this. This is just to show you this is a piece that I decided to discard but whichever way I decide is my and then I'm going to start from see how it's down there it gives me a starting point and this gives me an extra bit of length so that when I am ready to cut off the back because I was cut in the middle this will give me a length that I can work into it. So I'll be able to work this piece that I started with into the main piece. And at the end, I'll be able to work another piece in because that'll be the end. So it will balance itself out. So this is how I start with. And then I work through a needle and just start weaving off of that. Just go right there and right across. Now, 
I have one that I've started already because that makes life easier instead of you watching me continue to do it. You at least get an idea. So this kind of shows you the length. It's a lot of yarn. But I like to not have to weave in new yarn. You can. Uh, but I like to have one long piece that's going to take me through the whole bracelet. This is well more than I need because I like to overcompensate. So here it is set up. And you can see I've already started with the beads a little bit. So here's how I do it. Now I'm using one of these needles. I don't know. Can you see that thing? Maybe it's easier on this. It's just a tiny needle. And it is really springy. It's nice because it's got a flexible eye and the eye holds onto my thread, but it's super springy. So you can figure out at that point, this really doesn't, doesn't weave in and out. Normally you would want a, a nicer needle that would weave in and out, but if you're putting beads on, it just doesn't do that well. So I have, I don't know if you noticed that, I had a little double point needle that I've got right there and it makes my shed for me and I can put my needle through. And I even use my double point needle as my beater. So I just take that and I beat it down a little bit. You can see all my threads are nice and neat and I beat it down. And then this one gets put away because I need to make a new shed. But I can put this one away so this one's in it at all times. And then my other needle for the other shed. I'm just opening up the other opposite ones. Now this isn't super in-depth for exactly how to weave. So I can link anybody to a bead weaving demo if they need it. And let's see, I just did two passes. And so I am going to do another pass and then we're going to put beads on it because I like working from my other hand. You'll see. Once you get going on this, you'll see how it is. It's easier for me to work right to left than left to right because I am right handed. So there's that one. We put that in and you can, you can do it all beads. You can do it some beads. You can just do a couple rows of beads. I do it kind of random or by how it looks because you can see right in here that it was a little bit thicker. Here's a little bit thinner. So I'm going to pop some of these beads out. And when I'm working, you can see there's a, it's just a piece of linen that I have. It was just a piece of cloth that I grabbed and it's because the beads don't move as much on it. I find it's easier to pick up the beads this way. If I had just the smooth surface of the table that I'm on, the beads just start moving. Uh, I'm in an old farmhouse. Things go. So, let's see, there's nine. So with 10 threads, I need nine beads. And I'm gonna put the beads all the way down to the bottom. See where the beads are? They're right in here. And I'm going all the way behind everything. I'm not even weaving. No weaving at this point. Everything's behind. Okay. Now, I'm kind of going behind with them and using the fingers of my left hand, popping them up through between the threads. Now, on a good day, Sometimes they will pop up nice and even, and it'll be like amazing. And I'll feel like, oh, look, I won. I won the, the lottery for having this work immediately. However, that is not my luck today. Let's see. 
I swear it sometimes works a lot faster, but you know, when you've got a live video running, Murphy's Law says it isn't going to be that fast or that easy. So that's where we're at. So you just gotta coax them through until you have one bead between each thread. Ta-da. And you almost can't even tell. You kind of have to really critically look at it. And you can see that it's through each thread. And because I went underneath with that last time, I am going to, and I don't need to weave, I'm just, so that thread and beads went underneath and I popped all the beads up and the beads are all sitting up above the thread that we have here, the warp thread. And so then I'm just going to run my needle on the top so that it goes through. And you wanna make sure that it doesn't go and dip down or anything and go under any of them. But you wanna make sure it also goes through all of your beads. And there, and pull another thread through. So this is just, you know, just basic bead weaving. If you've ever done bead weaving as a kid or as an adult, it really is just basic bead weaving. And you can see it's pretty stable and stuck there now. And then I would keep doing weaving throughout until I came to the length that I wanted. And I can show you that this, this fits me pretty good. I like how it fits. And it's one of those things where you can just tighten there. It gives me enough space for everything else. And it's nice, it's cute. But I have another way. So if you don't wanna do it like this or making some other kind of um, sliding attachment for this, which I will link to how to do this. If you don't wanna make some other sliding attachment, there's another way. So this is a little bracelet I did the other night. And I wanted to show, let's see, this is the end of it. Can you see how I just ended it? I just knotted it up and ended it. On this end, I put beads. I doubled up the beads or doubled up the threads and put two threads through each row of beads and then ended it. Then you can see this little doodad here, which is what I'm gonna show you about. These happen to be something that I just got on Amazon and it's a bunch of things and sort of a kit so that you can do these. It's got all these different sized cappers so all these different sized caps and the caps all have an end on it with a hole in it so that you can finish it. It's got a bunch of different sized jump rings that come with it. It's got little chains and it's got the lobster clasp. So this is what I pulled out to finish this. So this is what we're gonna need to finish it. We need two of the little caps. We need a lobster claw, a chain, and two little jump rings, as well as some E6000 and maybe little pliers if you need them. I know some people can manage those jump rings really easily. So when you've got a kit like that, you wanna make sure, or even not, if you've just got a bunch of these hanging around, you wanna make sure that your uh, your knot is gonna fit in here and it's gonna fit rather snug. You don't want it to be loosey-goosey rolling around. And then, and you can see that I cut after the knot pretty short, but not 
so short that it's gonna fall apart. You just wanna make sure that you've got the glue in there and they want the glue all the way around the piece. And then you're gonna sit it in there and pop it on, take off any excess that you've got. And that is, oops, that's the backside. So that's the finished piece. All it needs is a chain and the other stuff. This is the end that I finished earlier so that it's dry. This, the E6000 takes a while to dry. So I'm just opening up a loop, putting the chain end in, and then closing that loop. And I will do the same on this side as soon as that dries up a little bit. I can sort of get it ready. Might let me do it now. You don't, you really do want to wait at least a couple of hours to let the E6000 dry. Otherwise, it's going to pop right off. So I can feel it when I put that on there that it's sort of on there, but it's going to pop right back off. So that's all you would do is put your chain and put this on there with your little jump rings. And away you go. And then you'll have a bracelet. That's all set. So that is, that is the culmination of that challenge, guys. That's it. That is the Tussa Hanky Challenge or the Mojo Challenge with the Tussa Hankies. And you can, if you wanna do this with these little things, you don't need a tapestry loom. So I've shown you that you can do it on the little pearl and loop looms. You can use your ankle. You can use a rigid heddle. I probably wouldn't lose, use a big loom, but if you've got some extra warp and you just wanna play around and it's set really tight, why not? Um, you can use a piece of cardboard. So these are set up so simply and you can use just a piece of cardboard about this size. So it's about eight inches and you can use a piece of cardboard. I mean, these give you a nice space. Can you see that they're raised up? So it gives you a nice space, but you can use a piece of cardboard. You can use just about anything to do a little weaving. You can use any of the old uh, bead looms. I remember my kids when they were little got a little bead loom. Those things work really well too. So anything that you wanna weave on that will work, you use such a small amount that it is pretty easy to use. So that's it. That's this challenge. That's the culmination. Um, all the challenges, I'm not gonna always do a project at the end. Some of them will have a project. Some of them will have an optional, hey, check this out. I got a little bit of something extra for you if you want to use it, but you don't have to. I mean, none of these are something that you have to. But um, some of them won't be geared to thinking exactly about a project. The next one kind of is, though. Is and isn't. It's going to be something that you can knit or weave or crochet. And it's gonna be based in a lot of color. And I pulled this basket out of color. And it's got my stuff that I've dyed and some stuff that other people have dyed. And I'm gonna spend a little bit more time with that basket. And I'm gonna spend some time with my stash at home. And I'm gonna pull some stuff out. And next week, I think next week, yeah, I'm gonna be here next week. Next week, I'm gonna talk about more of this stuff. And we are going to start our new challenge. Now, you don't have to finish up the silk challenge. If you don't want to, you can keep going with it. Um, but, the next one is going to be a lot having to do with color. And we'll talk about that next week. Bye guys.